Yeah, I missed that music, guys. Welcome back. Tennis Bets Live, first show of 2023. I am Mike, the producer. Happy to guest host our AO Women's Preview. And we are blessed with uh, four guys here. We can play some doubles if we wanted to. First off, Zach Cohen, Tennis.com, gambling editor. Zach, how are you, man? Doing well. I'm excited for the Australian Open. Nice, nice. Uh, right next to you, we got Brett Connors, BC. Brett will be doing some work with us here at Tennis Channel over the uh, the next uh, couple of weeks. Brett, how's it going? What's up, squad? How you guys doing today? I'm ready for a little bit of tennis. 2023 sounds crazy, but I'm uh, ready for it. Yeah, we're going to talk some women now, and then we'll get to the men in about 30 minutes or so. Uh, Kale Hammond coming at us from, uh, I believe, somewhere in Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. How's your 2023 going? Tulsa, Oklahoma. 2023 is great. 2022 was a little forgettable, but 2023, fantastic. The party day, Friday the 13th, and we got AO coming up in two days. Yeah, it's Friday the 13th. I didn't, I didn't even think about that. Uh, and last but not least, our guy, Alex Gruskin. You've been calling some matches for us on the T2 already this year. Alex, you ready for the AO, man? Oh, it was a fantastic start to 2023. And yeah, the tennis world gets rocking and rolling right away. Let me just say, if this was around the horn, you would win for the best background. That, you know, move over Woody Page. That Michael Haston background today is just exceptional. You guys might remember this as this, we called this the steam room back in uh, second serve. This is where we had Kale posted up uh, doing some betting action. Did a. Speaking of steam, did did Gruskin uh, don UNC attire just to uh, just to get me mad? I'm just I'm confused what you're doing with that. <laughs> I like to stir the Come pot on, here early. It's a, it's an early sign. An early si- signal's been sent. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm flustered. Year. I can't I can't focus now. So I gotta <laughs> oof, gotta lock in. All right, guys, let's jump into it. Uh, we got a lot of things to talk about. And we got a lot of uh, you guys all have a lot of wagers that we want to get into by the end of this show. Um, Zach, I'm going to start with you, uh, storylines right now, as we're starting the year's first major, I mean, the, this, the year's not even two weeks old. Um, but what have you seen so far, uh, from the women's side of things as we get going, uh, here with AO starting in two days? Yeah, I think that we've seen a beatable version of Sviatek, uh, you know, two losses in her last five matches, don't want to put too much weight into, you know, exhibitions and these early season tournaments, but you know, she's dealing with a shoulder injury. And I think that the rest of the field has to feel like, you know, it's not hers that she's going to run away with. They have a chance to win here. Nice. Nice. Brett. Um, what do you think, man? You've got a, a couple of women that, that you're thinking could rise up to the challenge. BC, you got us. Yeah. Yeah. Got you guys. Um, yeah, looking forward to uh, – yeah, Sabalinka is what I wanted to talk about. I want to talk about – like you said, Sweontek doesn't look good, maybe a little injured, uh, losing that match to Pagula 2-2, two and two, which was crazy. Um, I'm looking for someone this year to step up and take that number two spot. Sweontek's got such a big lead. Everyone knows she's been so dominant. Is there somebody who can bubble up and stay consistent enough to, to be number two? And I think it could be someone like Sabalinka. She kind of – we talked about her a lot last time we were together in, uh, for Paris – and she uh, was good there, won the Adelaide one last week. So if she can keep her serve under control and stay a little more consistent, I'd like to see that. And maybe she can uh, hold down that two spot. Nice. I just, I just vehemently disagree with both of them, <laughs> if I may, because that's – it's absurd to say out loud. Like the fact that you look at the odds right now, Iga Sviantek is plus 225 to win the Australian Open. Do we not remember that less than a year ago she won 37 consecutive matches? And prior to that 37-match win streak, she reached the semifinals of last year's Australian Open. She won two slams last year and, you know, again, separated herself from the field in a way that no one else did. I would also point out at plus 225, you take her, you're going to have opportunities to hedge against her. And that's why the fact that she's plus odds – like. This might be the last time for a decade we will see her at plus 225 entering a major. If you get it, I pounced on it. I actually saw it at plus 240, so I changed it on your board. Kale, what do you think about what Alex just said? You know, I completely agree with Alex. I don't know what she's shown us in the last two years that where you're just going to, you know, where you're going to fade her in any capacity. It's clear when the, you know, the spotlights are bright and when the pressure is the highest, that's when she plays 
some of her best tennis. And with how wide open the rest of the field is, Andrescu is a shell of herself. Naomi Osaka is pregnant. She's not playing for the foreseeable future. And you've got, got people like Jabor and Garcia, Lenka, Sakari even comprising the rest of the top 10. And we know how unreliable, they, how consistently unreliable they are. And then you have Pagula, the steady tortoise, going to win the race at the end. Eventually, she just beats Fiatek, but thank God, because she lost like seven times in a row badly. So I don't, I don't read anything into that. I think that this is a you know a one horse race. I'm excited to see what Kuder Matova can do. But other than that, and Danielle typically plays her best in Australia. But other than Iga, I, I just I just don't see it. All right, we'll uh, we'll move on yeah. in a second. But I got a comment from a listener, Ghost of Garolita says <laughs> Iga's shook. Nepo baby Pagula put a hurting on the Polish queen at the United Cup. Hey, you know what? Shout out USA. That was a heck of a run at the United Cup. Let's see if they can. Uh, Let's see if some of those Americans can keep it going. All right, Kale, before we move on, one of the things you always cover for us, conditions. What are you seeing down there? What 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 can we expect uh, on the courts in Melbourne? Yeah, I'll talk about this for the uh, men's video we're doing after this as well. But, you know, it's the same for both players. They're both using, both using the AO Dunlop balls, which are extremely – they you know, they are BBs, especially in extreme heat. They are super, super fast, and the courts in Australia – or some of they might be the fastest, you know, courts at a major we see, uh, you know, except for Wimbledon. Even even sometimes it might put Wimbledon, you know, sometimes that grass can play pretty slow. But I just think, you know, lots of holds. Um, I don't think we're going to be see too many upsets like we did in the U.S. Open. I think at the first major, I think the upsets are there's the good ones have had time to recover and recoup in the off season. So yeah, just conditions, hot, hot, fast. And first strike players, I think, have the advantage. If you're trying to play defense first out here, it's going to be a long, long day. Nice. Uh, all right, guys. Zach, let's get into it. What are what are a couple of your best bets that you are looking at as we jump into the event? You've already been putting out some articles on Tennis.com. A great job there. Everybody continue to follow uh, Tennis.com. We're having more and more betting articles, more picks. Um Zach, what, what are you looking at right now? Yeah, so I have two players to win one set in their matches. I like Brenda Fervertova against Sasnovich. Uh, I know that it's going to be really tough for a 15-year-old to play well in uh, you know the biggest environment there is. But at the same time, I think that that's going to get the crowd behind her. And I think that she got a really good opponent for this. Sasnovich has lost five matches in a row. Uh, she's the type of player that her level can dip for extended periods of time. I could see her, you know, maybe taking a set at some point to conserve, conserve energy for the third set. And I just think that she gets on the board with one set there. And then Kenan, I was a little bummed to see that these two matched up against, against each other because they both were playing pretty well earlier this year. But I just think that Kenan hits just such a good ball that, you know, Kale was mentioning how fast these courts are. I think Azarenka could have a little bit of trouble getting to them. And I just think that she'll take a set there. I think that's going to be a really tight match. Is Kenan back in shape? Do we think she's ready to do this on the Close. full-time basis? I mean, she looked really good a couple uh, in the few matches I've seen her so far. Okay, I think they're good. both great picks. I like my thing is in a bet like that, Zico, why do you plus one and a half sets and not over two and a half sets for the match? That way, you know, again, if you think it's going to go the distance, you take the over there, you usually get plus odds. Like it's never worse than plus 125. So why is the plus one and a half set better? You know, it's because I'm probably taking someone that I think has a chance to win outright, and I don't want to lose, you know, this this match on a 2-0 win. And, you know, I think Kennan especially can win that match 2-0. Yeah. I All would right. also say Kennan played great these first two weeks, so it's not a bad call. Alex, let's jump to you. You're, the first one on your list here is Danielle Collins, minus three and a half games against Kalinskaya. Yeah, that's my best bet of the day. You look for Collins, who is the defending finalist at this Australian Open. She's 63 and 29 overall since the start of 2021. 40 and 11 when she's played players ranked outside the top 50. That record gets even better. She's 27 and 5 against players ranked outside the top 50 on hard courts, and then 7 and 0 when she's played those sorts of players at the slams. Has not dropped a set in any of those seven matches. Callan Sky is one in six against top 50 players, let alone top 20 defending finalists like Danielle Collins at the majors. Kale mentioned it. 
fast conditions. I think Collins played excellent in her first two weeks in Adelaide. I know she lost three set matches to Kuder Matova, Rabakina, who probably just have better serves. And you see Rabakina on my list for a reason. I think things will be fast as well. I like these players who can play through the court. Collins at minus three and a half games just feels like a steal. So I'll take it minus 135. I'm giving a little juice, but I think it's very much worth it. I agree with Kale. Big hitters for me early in this event. I think they're going to have success. Nice. I like the Collins play a lot. I'm just uh, to piggyback on the Collins play because I was close to picking her for the show, but I I picked some other people. But, you know, she didn't doesn't have the best record to start the year. But, you know, she got there. She played two two lead up tournaments and look who she played. I mean, she she -hmm. played Elena Rybakina, Carolina Pliskova, Veronica Kudermatova, and then she beat Jill Teichman in straight sets, who's not a bad player. So, I mean, she's ready for this tournament. She has played four of, you know, the 25, 30 best players in the world all ready to start the year. The ball's not going to be looking fast for her. She's going to be seeing things clearly. And I, you know, I just like what she's going to be able to do. Kale, uh, I'm a big fan of your first pick on your list right there. Andre Eskubuskova, over 21 and a half games. Uh, I mean, Anybody that's who watches Andrea Esco matches, oh, uh, so Andrea Esco loves her three setters, man. I just, you know, that's strong to begin with. What What are your thoughts on that match? Because a lot of people are also just picking Buzkova to beat uh, the Canadian. Yeah, well, and and I don't blame them for doing that. But as Marie Buzkova's biggest fan, she has won me, you know, a lot of bets in the past before she was accurately priced. I actually think that the pendulum switched a little too far on Buskova. I don't think she is necessarily as good as the way she's being priced right now. Um, on she's struggling. Buskova is struggling a little bit to start the year. So you have, you know, Bianca Andreescu overs might be the best bet of the last I think he was going to say, like, you got yourself some excellent far. value there. And then. <laughs> yeah. On the over. Uh, BC, Brett, uh, you got two women's bets right here. I see you've got your Svantec win in the quarter. Tell us what you think about uh, those two. Yeah, <clears throat> I agree with Kale on the uh, Andrescu bet. That uh, also good, seems like it'd be a good live bet special opportunity where it's going to go back and forth. You'd probably be able to get plus money on uh, both of those those girls somewhere along the line. Uh, my picks, um, yeah, I think Swiatek is going to win her quarter. Uh, minus 110. I don't believe, I don't put that much into the Pagula uh, loss. Uh, it's kind of fluky, and Pagula, Kale said it, needed that win. She ended the year so bad last year at the uh, WTA Finals. And so, and if you look at the other names in her quarter, it's a lot of names that she does well against. And the second favorite is Coco, who has, she's never lost to. Bedosa, Rybakina, I would take my chances with Swiatek against both of them. And then, uh, and then, so I can win my bet. And then uh, Zach with his Pagula to win the title can still win. Man, is it everybody's internet or is it mine? No, I can hear you. I think it's okay, everyone else. You. Yeah, Looks Zico good. looks like he's moving and grooving as well. All right. Did you guys uh, hear Zach, all that or was I not talking? We lost <laughs> you at the last part. Um, okay. Uh, on Let me just second. How you can, go ahead. I'll, I'll just wrap a little bit. Yeah, Swiantek, Um I can win my bet. Zach can win his. If Pula wins the title, they play in the semis. Core patch what plus about me? five and a half. Yeah, you too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Um, but, uh, yeah, and core patch plus five and a half isn't much faith in her as it is against uh, more of a fade against Raducanu. She has the ankle injury. Uh, she had to pull out of the, of the match uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, and she was crying. She was complaining about court conditions. And if you're already complaining about the court conditions in the first tournament of the year, you, I don't know, if, you know how focused she is. Um, core patch plus 420 might have a little value, might be worth a little fiber. And uh, you might be able to get a little live bet back and forth. Uh, if you look at their last score line, I think it was six love, two, six, six, one. So it's, it'll be a back and forth affair, I'm sure. Nice. It'll be fun. I just want to say now that Kale's back, your board is a heart attack. Like that is a brutal way to kick off the Australian Open. And a fun fact for Brett Connors and I, Hasten mentioned I've had the distinct privilege of getting to broadcast for T2, a privilege I hope not to fork away here today but we were in the in the booth waiting i was waiting to begin and gil was on the call gil gross and he pronounces it marie bojkova and both brett and i are sitting there and we're like that can't be right like it's not bojkova let's go to the wta website 
True story. It's Bojkova. It's a hard O on both parts. We learned that lesson and you're not learning. You're not getting better. So shout out to Gil because I mocked him like in the booth. I was like, that's just (laughs) wrong. Like what a fool. And I was the fool. So apologies to him. But like Anisimova Kostyuk, heart attack. Shelby Rogers ever, heart attack. Andrescu Bojkova I love, but like it's a tough board, Gil. Oh, well, we'll, we'll see, you know, we'll see that during the next show, how, how we're looking. I agree with you. Anisimova Kostic's one you probably want to avoid, yeah. but I just don't want to live in a world where Anisimova can't get through this first round. Even if Kostic's playing well, <laughs> she is just so much better at hitting a tennis ball. Huh. Kale, you got your all American ladies parlay uh, with Coco and Collins. Uh, we're rooting for that as Americans. Uh, what are your thoughts there? What, what, what are your thoughts on how far each of them can go in this event? You know, with the courts are, I still think Coco might prefer a slower court so she can have time to line up the forehand. Um, but I think Collins could win the tournament, frankly. You know, I really do think she's got, you know, gotten the semis, gotten to the finals. She plays really well here, and there's no reason she can't win this tournament if she's healthy. But I think the parlay is, is a kind of a smash play. I, I really do. I think that minus 128 for just Coco Goff and Daniel Collins to get through the first round is about as good a price as you're going to see um, anywhere. Zach, any other thoughts uh, that you're looking here? I, I, you want to go in more on your Pagula. You wrote about that last week on ten or this week on tennis.com. I think that's a great value. You bet 1200 looks like a great price for somebody who, who was just smoking fools uh, during the United Cup. Um, yeah. what are some of your thoughts? And if you see anything else on the board that you might, you might tail here. Yeah. I'll just throw out that. I like Collins a lot too. I had her as a flyer, you know, a long shot play in my article that I wrote up a few days ago on tennis.com. I think it, you know, she was plus 2,800 or something. It just wouldn't surprise me at all if she were to be in the finals of this tournament. Um, yeah. And then going back to Pagula, uh, I really like both Pagula and Sabalenko. Like I said before, I, I don't think Sviatek, you know, is looking as dominant as she was before. And, you know, I, you guys mentioned before the odds are plus 225, but those are, you know, better odds than we've seen on her by a lot, like a you know, wide margin. And I think the odds makers are comfortable giving that out for a reason. Uh, and, you know, Sabalenka, actually, I might actually like her more than Pagula at this point because she opened, I think, at plus 950. And, you know, after that draw came out, she's now down to plus 750. Uh, she has a pretty easy path, in my opinion, to get there. And I, you know, I'm not sure anybody looks more dangerous than her right now. The only thing I would add to that conversation is who can you realistically see picking up the trophy? Like that's why Iga plus 240 to me is the bet. Because until I can see someone play four matches consecutively, let alone the seven they're going to need to, but four really good matches consecutively. Sabalenka's kind of did that the first week of the season. But until then, I'm not ready to hedge. And like, I think Sabalenka's next closest. I do think there's a world where I could see her raising the title. I can't do that with Pagula or anyone else yet, Kale. Can you? No, I, I no, I can't. Not yet. Not with how you know how bad the matchup has been, Iga versus Pagula, in the past. I mean, I know she got that one victory, but it has been just a major, major beatdown mm-hmm. every time. I think that you know Sviatek might be entering this phase of her career where she's big titles won so many matches that you know she needs something like this to get up for you know a grand slam she's going to bring her best tennis so you know i like the price outright on her for sure i think it's pretty solid and if she does lose if she falls i'm interested to see who's going to knock her out Mm -hmm. Uh, because i i I have no idea right now so so we'll see and let's take a look real quick i've got my handy dandy draw with very small print that's why i had to lose the glasses uh (laughs) shvantec niemeyer yeah, she's going to beat Niemeyer, right? Mm, uh, weapons, plays, but yes. She, then she's probably going to play uh, Camila Osorio if she gets past the Hungarian. Uh, then it's it's Bozhkova, and and you know <laughs> we all love her. Um, and then and then your girl Danielle Collins in the uh, that would be the fourth round, right? Or is that the that's yeah that's the fourth round? So it it could get tricky there. Uh, and then she's got, you know, whoever's going to come out of the bottom half of that quarter between Goff and I'm not even going to mention Bedosa. Uh, yeah. Boy, boy, Coco's got an easy draw, I think, if she gets past Siniakova, which she should. Yeah. That's Ooh, my girl, Shin Wen Zhang. God, I, I was going to say, I was just going to say, I think that she has a chance to beat Coco and make a pretty deep run here. Love that. 
What do you don't uh, you think? Because uh, on my site, uh, Swiatek moved. The line moved a little bit um, in the last week, so it went from like plus one uh, one seventy five up to like plus two ten. So do you yeah. think because of that? Don't you think that's a, a an easy kind of gimmick to like put put a good chunk on her? Because then, like like Russ said, you're going to have chances to hedge. Like whoever she plays, she's going to be a big, big, big favorite. So I feel like it's not bad if you're getting plus, you know, two two to over two to one on your money. That gives you a lot of strategies to use later in the tournament. But isn't this also the moment where if there was a time machine? Because we always say if there's a time machine, you go back 10 years. What do you tell yourself to do? You say just bet Novak Djokovic to win every slam. Just do it. And it'll like you'll win. Like, isn't this if in a time capsule telling ourselves now, but taking the future perspective of like, guys, she's plus 240. That's just never going to happen again in the next decade. We'll be lucky if she's not minus 150 come the French Open. Like now is the time. And then again, as Connor's alluded to hedge later, but start out with the plus money, 37 match win streak, seventh youngest to three slams in history champion. Right. Cause in the early rounds, the amount you'll have to put on it to hedge is so little. I mean, she's going to be huge, huge favorites in those first two or three rounds. You got to think. Yeah, absolutely. Let's move the line. Let's get that under plus 200 <laughs> tennis bets. Let's move that Jeez. line. Time to dump. Yeah. All right, guys, <laughs> let's take a <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at the board one more time. We'll give it a quick run through. And and just a reminder, this is our first of probably two shows we'll do. We'll do another show next. We're doing a men's preview coming up here very shortly. That'll be a separate show. Next week, we'll do a show probably towards the end of the week. See how we did in round one and looking towards, uh, you know, week two when, when we really get to the, the business end, as they say. Uh, but uh, once again, Alex Gruskin at Al Gruskin likes Danielle Collins to cover the three and a half game spread. Um, you've got a little parlay action with Ray Bikina and Madison Keys paying out a nice plus 168. And then Iga Shvantec to win the title at plus 240, a number that has gone up uh, based on maybe just some somewhat shaky performances start to the year. But we shall see. Um, sliding over here, Zach, you've got the younger of the Fruvertova sisters. Uh, winning a set against Sasnovich, Brenda Fruvertova, 15 years old, and her sister's 17. They have, their combined age is five years younger than Rafael Nadal. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. Crazy. Uh, Sophia Kennan won here three years ago. How much would Sophia Kennan love to just go in a time machine and go back three years pre-COVID? I mean, a lot of us would, but <laughs> she won the Australian Open and then the world blew up two months later. And then she kind of blew up uh, in the last year and, and good to see that she's getting back on it. And I hope that she, I hope she has some, some, some more good tennis in her because it's fun when she's playing well. Um, you've got then Sabalink and Pagula to win the title. That's some really nice money there. Uh, Kale, Andres, Kabuskova, Boskova, over 21 and a half games. They love their three set matches. Anna Samova, the American to get a win over Costa Yuck at basically even money. Shelby Rogers, to dominate Hartono is I imagine what you're going for here at under 19 and a half games. And then your money line parlay Americans, Goff and Collins, Brett, you like Schwantek to win a quarter. I, I got to say, I love that too, man. That, that looks mm. like a hell of a number minus minus one ten just to, just to win, uh, you know, to, to get to the semis and then uh, fading Ryan Okanu has been very profitable. Um, final thoughts guys, before we wrap up our women's preview. Alex, you're, you're a man of few words. What do you yeah, say? No, it's, again, <laughs> the big thing for me, and Kale alluded to it earlier, if not Iga, then who? And it's like, I can't wait to see who rises because that's what the question is right now. We know who number one is, but who's two, who's three, who's four, who's five, three weeks into the uh, WTA season, we already get to find out. All right, guys, uh, this has been our AO 2023 women's preview thank you for watching whether it's on youtube our tennis channel youtube page our tennis.com facebook page our uh tennis bets twitter and now i think you can listen to us on the tennis channel podcast network shout out money mitch michaels so uh, plenty of ways to check out tennis bets all year long and be sure to follow uh tennis bets twitter all right australian open guys let's get after it and we will see you soon Thank you.